subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, hello, hello. You are welcome to SHSR on Joy Learning. Today we are looking at core mathematics. Core mathematics. My name is Evans Ode, your facilitator. So with SHSR and in core mathematics for senior high school two, that is form two core mathematics. The last meeting we continued from the previous one, which was measuration two. And measuration two, we've done part one, and that took us through the prisms. We talk about the cube, cuboid, and then other things that goes with cube and cuboid. Then on our last, last meeting, we're supposed to do cylinder and cone. But we we're able to finish cylinder. We couldn't make time to do the cone because cylinder entails a lot. We have to do the annular cross-sectional area, the volume of material used in making a pipe. I mean, those stuff couldn't allow us to do, go beyond that. And so today, we want to use today's lesson to tackle the concept of cone and then also to look at pyramid if you are able to make time. Right, so for, as usual, because it's math and then you are in the house and I'm here, I want to see your notebook, your pen and paper, your calculators. Where possible, you have to solve some of the questions on your own. And then I'll start up for the day. It's still a motivational word, something to think about, and as simple as this. People lose their way when they lose their why. People lose their way when they lose their why. So focus on your why. People lose their way when they lose their why. So focus on your why. You know why you are in school. The moment you lose focus, you miss the way. And when you lose the way, it also make you lose the reason why you are in school. Don't let friends, don't let phones, don't let um, drag, things take you out of the focus. Stay focused in school. Learn your lessons. This is the hour for you to be a student. A time will come, you can be a student again. So enjoy your study time and enjoy your day as a student. Right. By the end of today's lesson, we want to identify and draw the net of a cone and pyramid, calculate the total surface area of a cone and pyramid, and then find the volume of a cone and a pyramid. So we want to look at cone, cone, cone. We've seen cone. I mean, we've been using it, all right? So we want to look at it. And I'm sure you've all seen cone before. If you look at this, you didn't see cone, right? But very soon we'll see cone. If you look at this, can you see cone? No. But let's see, we'll see cone very soon. And so you can see cone here with our um, popcorn, with our ice cream. Even structures, people put up um, structures in the shape as cone. So we want to know more about cone, how to find the volume, the surface area, and so on and so forth. So, when you pick a cone, okay, let's see how it comes. Let's say we have a circle. This is a circle, right? If I put these two together, it's a circle. Then I draw two red eye, and then I cut the two red eye. Okay, so let me put it this way for you to see it clearly. Good, 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 good. It's nice. So, I take off one area of the circle that I've cut. And I know you know the name of this. What is it? Sector. That was part of the things we did when we were doing measuration one. And this is a sector. So sector, sector. But the one is always bigger than the other, right? The bigger one is called the major sector and then the minor sector. 
Now let me pick the minor sector and then fold it. Then I create a cone. Can you see that? I create a cone, a cone. Okay, so this is a cone. So we can create cones from sectors. Again, I can still use the bigger one too. That one to fold it and still create a cone. So a cone can be created from the major sector and then the minor sector. Good. So on the diagram, we see this. So for the cone, we have the topmost part here, the pointed part here called the vectors, right? Or the apex. Then we also have the radius of a cone because the moment you fold the cone, you see that we have a circular part here. And the circular part, we need to know the radius of it. And that's why we have the radius. Then we also need to know the height. If I place this cone on a table right now, you see that from the base to the apex is a perpendicular distance. And that perpendicular distance becomes the height of the cone. So I'll use it to represent that. Then we have, look at this, observe these two lines here. Observe this. We call it the slant height. So that is this. You see, if I fold the cone, the center to form the cone, I get a slant height here, the slant height. Okay? And the slant height makes an angle with the base. So the slant height is not the same as the normal height of the cone. So let's take note of that. Now, in exams, they could give you a question whereby you'll be asked to find the radius of the cone, the height of the cone, the slant height of the cone. All right. Then again, you could be asked to find the vertically, or so the vertical angle, which we'll look at that later. So when we have a cone and we open a cone, like we've done here, you see that we're meant to cut a cone and you open the top or the base, if it is covered, you create a sector. And that is what we have here. You can see from the diagram that when we cut the top, the top opens to give you a circle. And then the curved surface area opens also to give you a sector. A sector. Good. So based on this idea, we can use it to calculate total surface area of a cone. So if I pick this particular sector and I know the total surface area and it's folded with a base sealed, I mean the base is sealed, and I know the area of a circle, together I will know the total surface area of a cone. Now, we are going to establish the area of the curved surface alone. You see the flat surface here, when I fold it, it forms a curved surface of the cone. So you want to learn how to do that. Now before then, observe that when it is in a sector form, we learned from measuring one that from the point here up to the point here, we have what we call the arc, length of an arc. Now with the length of an arc, we also have the radius of the circle before I cut to fold, I have this as my radius, that as my radius, and this is my length of an arc. Now look at the length of an arc. After folding, the length of the arc becomes the circumference of the base of the cone. It makes sense, right? Beautiful. Again, the length of the arc, after folding it to form a cone, create the circumference of the cone. Then the area of the sector, when folded, also creates the curved surface area of the cone. With this concept, we can establish the formula. Now, check this. So this is my length of an arc, and we know from our lesson on measuring one that the length 
of an arc can be calculated using theta over 360 times 2 pi r. Theta is here. All right? And over 360 times 2 pi r, which is the circumference of a circle. And I'm using big r here for the radio because it was from a bigger radius that we cut our sector before we fold it to create a cone. And the cone also have a radius of the cone at the base. So I want to use that. And we'll say that this is equal to the circumference of the base of the cone when it's folded, right? So the length of an arc now becomes the circumference of the base. So if the length of an arc is this, circumference is that, then we can equate the two because they are the same. Because it was this length of an arc that became circumference of the circle. So we say theta over 360 times 2 pi big R is equal to 2 pi small r. The small r has to do with the cone and the big r has to do with the, um, the sector. Now, let's do simple cancellation here. We can divide both sides by 2 pi so that the 2 pi goes away from this expression. And we can divide again, so after getting theta over 360 times big R is equal to small r, that is if you do the division, we get that. Then again, I can divide both sides by big R, here by big R, here by big R, so that I have theta 360 equals small r over big R. I can create this particular expression. This is SHS 1 mathematics, and we are dealing with senior high school. Junior high school would only give you the formula. Probably they didn't prove it. But here you need to understand and analyze. That makes you a senior high school student. And this is form 2. Sorry, this is SHS 2, not form 1. 2. So, I mean, you have a very good brain to calculate this. Now, so let's make this one the subject so that gives us the r over big r equals theta over 3 as equation one then again when you pick your sector again and you fold it we said that the area of this sector when folded become the curved surface so we can say that for the curved surface area is the same as the area of the sector so if that is the case Area of a sector is equal to the curved surface area of the cone. It's true. Area of a sector is now giving us theta over 360 times pi big R squared because sector has a bigger radius. Right. Beautiful. But then from equation one, we know that theta over 360 can be replaced by small r big R. So we made that substitution, okay, and we get our curved surface area, which we are representing it by big A, is equal to small r over big R times pi big R squared. If I cancel one of this r by that, then I'm going to have, before the finance, I'm going to have A is equal to small r times pi, one of the big r. Again, I cancel this one r from this because we have two of the r at the top. So one r can cancel the two, so we are left only one. And our small r is here, so a becomes small r times pi, big r. Then again, let's understand from here. You see that this particular radius that's a bigger radius from the sector. When folded, became the slant height of the cone. It makes sense, right? When folded, the radius of the bigger sector or the sector becomes the slant height of the cone. And so in place of this big R, I can use L because with cone, we don't have big R. The big R has become rather the slight height. So we replace the big R by small r, and our equation now becomes 
curved surface area equals pi r l, where l represents the slant height, small r represents the radius of the curve, the base, I mean the circular base, and then the pi is our constant, which I believe you remember in measuration one, we did establish pi. Where is it coming from? Go back to um, Joy Learning TV on YouTube and search for core mathematics. And specifically, you can even type measuration one alongside, and it will pop up for you to watch the whole concept where we discover pi and the value of pi. All right, so therefore, if my curved surface area is giving me pi RL, if I have a cone which has the base, I mean the cone is sealed with the base, then the base being a circular object will add up to give us, so we say curved surface area is pi RL, and the base also is giving us pi R squared. When I put them together, I'll get pi RL plus pi R squared. Beautiful, isn't it? And we see this a lot in our daily life. Somebody will ask, why are we learning all this? Remember the last time I showed you a video of how engine capacity is calculated because of the knowledge of cylinders and the volumes of cylinders. And I'm sure those who have been designing material that has to do with cone, they also know how to calculate the volume and then the surface area. Then we have something we call vertical angles, semi-vertical angles, an angle between the base and the slant height. Let's see how we can find those ones too. You see, when we have a cone, we have a space between the two slant heights. You know, we have two slant heights. You can see that from the diagram here. Two slant heights, this two slant heights. There is an angle between them. It's called vertical angle. The vertical angle. And this vertical angle, when we divide it into two using our height, it creates what we call semi-vertical angle. And it's easy to calculate because you know your L, okay? You know your L, you know your H, you know your R. And you've also learned trigonometry, so katua. You remember, so katua. You can use your sign, your cos, and your tan to find either this angle alpha or the angle it makes with the base, you can also calculate it from here. Once again, if I place a cone on the flat surface, okay, flat surface, you see that the slant height will make an angle to the base. And that angle is what we see here. And you could be asked to calculate that. Okay, and always remember that the height of the cone makes an angle of 90 degrees to the base. Okay, the moment you place it on the flat surface, the height will make an angle to the base. And even if it's not placed and the down is covered, it's always making an angle of 90 with the base. So we can calculate that using Sokatwa like I've just told you. What is the volume of a cone? How do you find the volume of a cone? We'll use a video that I picked from YouTube to demonstrate how the formula can be generated. So let's watch this video quickly and see how to do that. Now in this video, we have a cone and a cylinder. One, the two are of the same diameter or radius and they are of the same height. Okay, and now this lady is trying to pour water into this um, cone and then transfer that into the cylinder. First one has gone into it. Let's look at it. Second one has gone into it. And the third one has also gone into it. Exactly right. Good. 
So what does this tell you? It tells you that if I pick a cylinder, okay, with um, the same circular base as a cone, so that it goes like this. Let me show you quickly here. The height of the cone is the same as the height of the cylinder. Two, the circumference of the cone is the same as the circumference of the cylinder. The diameter of the cone is the same as the diameter of the cylinder. If these conditions are met, then we are saying that three times, three times the volume of a cone makes up the volume of the cylinder. And we know from cylinder that to find the volume of a cylinder, we may look at the area of base times height. We said that last meeting, area of base times height. And the area is pi r squared. Height is h. Then we can know the volume of a cylinder. But because three of the cone can fill the cylinder, then we can say the volume of a cone is one third the volume of a cylinder. So it comes as simple as that. Okay? So the volume of a cylinder is area of base. I don't want you to memorize the formula. Just understand area of base times height. The base area is pi r squared. Height is h. So we put them together. Then we can see the volume of a cone is one third the volume of a cylinder. It's so beautiful and so nice. Let's see a few questions and see whether we can tackle the pyramid as well. A few questions. Um, I will not solve them to details. I will just give you the clue that you go and solve it yourself. But then I will give you the best you need to know so that you can solve every question on your own. A right cone has radius 5 centimeters. So a right cone simply means a cone that is perfect. Eh? A perfect cone. All is perfect. You see the base exactly circular base and then the slant height are the same. So the height is 12 centimeters and the radius of the base is 5 centimeters. We want to find the slant height. We want to find its volume. And we want to know the total surface area. That means it is sealed at the base. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. So I'll give you a sketch of that. So first of all, let me just do something like a sketch of a cone. And this is my radius r, my h is here, and my l, slant height. The h is given in the question. The radius is also given in the question. So all I want to do is slant height. So you can tell me what to do with the slant, I mean how to get a slant height. Knowing that this meet at angle of 90. It's so obvious. Let me make it bigger for you to see it work. Well. It's so obvious. This is H, this is L, this is 90 degrees, this is R. I think it's so clear now. So I can use Pythagoras theory to do this. And by so doing, I will just say H, the L squared is equal to H squared plus R squared. L squared becomes, what is my H? 12. What is my R? 5. So 144 plus 25. Put them together. Take the square root of your answer here, which is 169. And then you can get your L to be 13. Calculator can do the rest for you. Then what is the volume? We know it's one third area of base times height or area of a cylinder times height. Or the area of base times height. Just put it that way. Simple. Area of base times height is one third that. So one over three times Pi, which is 22 over 7, given to us according to the question. We are taking pi to be 22 over 7. Okay? And we are taking our r, which is 5 squared, and our height is 12. Put all together, you get your answer as 314.2857. They didn't specify the number of decimal places we have to leave our answer, so I just left it in four decimal places. Then the total surface area, 
it means we need our area of the curve plus base area. We know our L from here. We know our R given the question. We substitute the values and we'll get our answer as this. So you can take the picture of the question, okay, and keep it and do detailed solution and try whether you get the same answer that I've provided for you, which gives you this. Okay. Example number two. This time the question says that the volume of a cone with base radius 12 centimeters is 132. Find the height of the cone. That means you want to find the height of the cone if the base radius is 6 centimeters, which is quite cool, right? Just V being equal to 1 over 3 pi small r squared h. Now the V has been given rather in the question. Pi, they say we should take it to be 22 over 7. Radius, they said is 6 squared. We are making H the subject. So do change your subject and your answer will come as such. If you do that, you get 3.5 centimeters for the height. Cool chop, right? Then probably this will be the last question that I would like you to take a picture of it and then solve it. But I'll give you a clue to that. Okay. The diagram shows a sector of a circle with center O. That means the whole thing is starting from a center, of a, sorry, a, a circle. You see the circle? Okay. And according to the question, it has a radius. And here the radius here is the radius of the original circle, which is 14 centimeters. The angle at the center that means the angle at the center, that's the central angle of the sector. Mm -hmm. That was cut. It's 270, so it means they use the bigger side of it. Okay, so this is the 270 angle we are talking about. And then the radius here is 14 centimeters. If this sector is folded, now the sector is now folded to form a cone okay find the radius of this cone and the curved surface area of the cone it's as simple as that right so we can do this and when you do that you get this answer but then let's look at it a bit detailed so that we move on so we have the sector folded, and when it's folded, it creates a cone. It has a radius, and this is our height, h. And we are finding the radius of the cone. Remember that the bigger radius, when you fold it, it becomes the slant height. So we can put 14 here as a slant height. Right. Now, we also know that the curved surface area is the sector, area of the sector, which is theta 360 times pi big R squared. This should be equal to, this curved surface area should be equal to, sorry, this sector, okay, should be equal to the curve surface area of the cone. So curve surface area is pi r l. You see where this one is coming from? It means that we can't just quote the curve surface area alone to solve this question, unless we bring in the original sector in place. The angle of the sector was given as 270. Pi is to be taken as that. Big R was 14, so 14 squared. 
Again, we have pi, the same pi, 22 and 7. Small r, we don't know. And L now is the same as the radius, so L14. That's it. So our target is to keep only this small r, the subject, and that will give us our answer. Right. So when you do it, you get the radius to be 10.5 centimeters now the curved surface area once you know your radius you can find the curved surface area by just multiplying the pi times the r calculated from here which is 10.5 then times your l which is 14 and that also will give you 600 sorry 462 approximately centimeter squared i mean approximately and then centimeter square will come Oh, another question is here. I thought that would be the last question. So this one, I will just let you go through it without any clue. You can take your time and solve it. When you do it, this should be your answers. This should be your answers. It includes semi-vertical angle. And once you know your radius, you know your height, you know your slant height from the question, you can use Sokatwa, any of them to solve for the semi-vertical angle angle right now let's go quickly through the pyramid and see if you can finish pyramid today so that we'll be left with only the sphere to work on if we get opportunity of meeting again they will look at sphere as a whole then it will end measuration two we've done well we've done part one part two today's part three and we'll soon finish everything about measuration two so pyramid, this is a pyramid, right? Pyramid. So I have pyramid also over here. After looking at the pictures, I'll show you my pyramid that I've cut out. So this is a pyramid. I'm sure you know this from primary school because primary school, they talk to you pyramid, they talk to you comb, but here we are going to analyze detailed, okay? Another pyramid is here. So we'll call the first one, since it has four, um, size at the base, if the size happened to be square, I mean the shape happened to be square, we'll say square base pyramid. And if it is rectangle, we'll call it rectangular base pyramid. Right. Then the next structure here, um, I'm thinking this should be one, two, three, four, five, um, six, seven, eight. So eight sided base which we'll say is octag uh, sorry octagon so octagonal pyramid octagonal pyramid or octagonal base pyramid take note of this no matter the base always for pyramid the faces are triangular the faces are always triangular that makes it a pyramid so take note of that the faces are always in a triangular form. Look at this structure too. That's a pyramid. So people can build like this. I'm believing that this house has underground, okay? Uh, they've done some um, basement. The, the whole structure is in the ground and then they brought the roof up with some windows to give light and some ventilations and other stuff. It's someone's house, yeah? I wish I could have a house like this too. It would be nice. Good. Ooh, another structure that looks exactly like a square based pyramid. Like a square based pyramid. Right. So these are all pyramids. We see some structures of that form. Here we see the pyramid on top. And then the base looks like more of prism. Okay. Good. We can also have pyramid with triangular base. And I'm sure you might have seen this object like this before. This is a triangle, the base is triangle, but it's still the faces still look triangular. We can have the base being triangle, faces being triangle. We can have square. And when a pyramid has a circular base, then it creates the cone. You remember that one? Good. So now let's look at pyramid. Now this is a pyramid that is being drawn here. 
Let's look at the part that we could be asked to calculate. The first part we want to look at is the height. And the height can be generated from the center of the base. So if this is my base, which is for this one is square, square base, okay, I'll form the pyramid by folding the triangular faces to meet at the top. Now, from the center of the base to the top gives us the height, which we are looking at it over here. So this is our height of the pyramid, the vertical height of the pyramid, or we can say the perpendicular height or perpendicular distance from the base to the apex. Then, so we say OV is the height of the pyramid, and then A, B, C, D is the base of the pyramid. Then again, look at this line here. Look at it. Look at it again. Have you seen this side? It go all round, four of them, okay? And each of them is called the sloping edge or slant edge. So if you look at it from here, you can see that the sloping edge is this one. Okay, the sloping edge is this one. Where the two faces meet is our sloping edge. Where the two faces meet is our sloping edge. That is our sloping edge. Then observe this one too. Look at this line too that is coming. Look at this. Look at that. Can you see that? Good. That also comes with a name called the slant height. And from this, you can see that if you pick one of the triangular face, the middle line is what we refer to as the slant height. You can be asked to find the slant height. You could be asked to find the slant edge. You could be asked to find the height of the pyramid itself. So we have a whole lot of work to do as far as this um, aspect of the course is concerned. Then again, let's see. Observe this blue line. Look at it again. Look at it again. That forms the triangular face, right? So it is called the slant face. The slant face or the triangular face. And we say slant face because sometimes if the base is also a triangle and you mention triangular faces, you will not be sure about which one you are making reference to. And so even though for this is called triangular face, we call it the slant face. So this is the slant face. Slant face. And you, can, you could be asked to find the area of the slant face or the area of the slant faces. You could be asked to find that. Right. So that is the part, or these are the parts of um, the pyramid. You could be asked to find any of them. In addition to that, you can also be asked to find the angle between the two faces at the top here. They meet at the apex. There's an angle between them, like we did for cone. It is called the vertical angle. We'll look at that soon. Now, if you open a pyramid, that's the net of a pyramid like we have here, you can see this particular shape as the net of a pyramid. You can also see that from the diagram that we see on the screen. So that is pyramid for you. So you can see the opening of the pyramid. You can open it that form. Then also, you can also have it like this. You see, this one, there's a base. The one on the screen says, has been a base. But then the one I have here, you can see that when you open it, it will look like what we did for cone, okay? But then, here there are edges, okay? So that when I fold it, I can still form a pyramid without a base. So 
we can have our pyramid this way, we can have it on as we see on the screen. The screen. So we've said it earlier on that we have different types of pyramids. We can have triangular based pyramid, square based pyramid, rectangular based pyramid. We can talk of hexagonal based pyramid, pentagonal based pyramid, I mean, and so on and so forth. But our level here, most of our questions are either triangular base or square or rectangular base. How do we find the total surface area of a pyramid? If I have a pyramid, I want to know the total surface area, what will I do? And I'm sure this is very easy to calculate because it comes with base and a triangular faces. Now, let's take note of this. Pay attention to this one. Let's pause for a while. Let's pay attention. If we have a pyramid and the base happens to be square base, then automatically, if you open it up like this, the triangular faces are going to be of the same area. They will be of the same area. If the base is rectangular, then only two face will be equal, then the other face also will be equal. Remember, rectangle has two opposite sides equal. So if the two sides that are equal, it will force their rectangular, uh, triangular faces to be equal. Then the two other sides that are also equal will make their areas also equal. If you are fortunate and your question comes like a square based pyramid, then hallelujah, you can easily do that because when you find one, area times four then plus the base area will give us total surface area of the pyramid it makes sense right again if it is square base and you find the area of one triangular face times four plus the area of the square base can you see that that is what we are looking at total surface area so I've said that the sum of the area of the base and the four triangular faces will give a total surface area. Then let's look at the volume of a pyramid. How do we get the volume of a pyramid? Will it be the same as the volume of a cone? Well, let's see. We'll have a video here again to watch an experiment That will give you um, the way we can generate or how the formula came about. We'll look at it from here. Here, once again, the person doing this experiment, it was picked from the YouTube, picked a cube or say a cuboid, but I think he used cube, and picked a square base um, pyramid. And then make sure the cube has the same square base area as the, cube, uh, the, the, the pyramid. And then the height are also the same. Then he filled water with the pyramid and started pouring that into the cube. And realized that three of this um, pyramid filled one cube on condition that they all have the same base area and the same height similar to the same cylinder base area and then the cone base area having the same height three of cone filled cylinder here two three of um pyramid fills one cube so for us to know the volume of um, pyramid, we need to just say one third the volume of the cube, which also comes like area of base times height. So we can easily do that. So here we have one third area of base times height, giving us the volume of a pyramid. 
So you see, it's very cool to understand this, right? Very, very cool to understand this. Now, let's take another aspect. Angle between faces and then the base. So let's look at the face VBC from our diagram and then the base. And this is how it goes. Look at it. This is the face and this is the base. And you see the face comes close like this. And that is where we see the angle formed by the triangle and then the square base. So that is what we call uh, angle between the face and that. If you draw it this way, you can see it like this. Check. So this is what we are looking at. Okay. And when we extract this, so it's here. Check it again from here. This is what we are looking at. The angle between the triangular face and then the base of the pyramid. Right. So you can see like this. So it's easy to calculate because if you extract that from the main triangle, we are calculating for this. Um, sorry, let's go back. Calculating for this angle. And this remains the height. The side here is just halfway through the base length. So if the base length is 20, then that becomes 10. Right? And then the side here becomes our slant height which is more or less the height of the triangular face. You can do that. But once you know the height of the pyramid and you know the side of the base and halfway through will give you this, you can use tan theta to say tan theta equals opposite height over the base or the base, I mean half of the base. We give you the answer. So it's not difficult to calculate. It's a matter of knowing the information or having the information, extract them, and then do what you are asked to do. Then let's also look at it from here. The two faces meeting at the top. The two faces meeting at the top. So you can see that from here. So you can see that in my um, pyramid, you can see that the two faces will meet at the top with an angle between them. And that angle comes like this. Look at it. It comes like this. Simple. We call it vertical angle. Vertical angle. But you can divide that into two to create semi-vertical angle. So look at this one. Have you seen it? And when we extract that, we can also have it this way. And it's easier to work with because we know our height already. We know halfway through the base, also we know it. And then we want to find this angle. Again, we can use tan theta to do it. Even without knowing the slant phase, we can still use only this and that to calculate that vertical angle. And times two will give us the angle between the face. Right. We've done well today. We've been able to go through up to this point, And I'm so happy that we are about finishing um, pyramid. Okay, let's pick one question, just a question, and analyze it. You may not be able to solve everything, but I want to analyze because sometimes it comes a whole lot. So here, let's see a pyramid with vectors O. That means the question is giving you, telling you that the pyramid should have a vectors O. Stands on a square base. That is good news because it's going to be square. So if you want to find the total surface area, it's cool job for me. And the base has been dimensioned that OA is equal to OC, OD, AB, everything is equal to 5 centimeters. This is the question. I'm to find the height of the pyramid, the volume of the pyramid, the angle between the plane OAB and the base, like we've, we've done, and then the angle between the faces. That also we've been able to do that. So it's cool. So what we are going to do, these are the answers, by the way, but then let's go through them. You may not go detail, I mean, answer, but this is a triangle, sorry, a pyramid. And the question said the base and then the slant height are all 555 five, five, because it said O, A, O, D, 
OB and OC, and then the AB are all five centimeters. So that's our pyramid. And take note that the distance OA is the same as OD, is the same as OB, is the same as OC. That one is true for all pyramids. But it is not always true that the base length will be the same as the slant height. No. But for this very question, the question said they are the same. The OC is 5, and then the AB or BC is also 5. Our first question says we should calculate the height of the pyramid. So for us to get the height of the pyramid, it means we need to know the height itself by creating it like this and get a center and then create our height. And it's very cool. If I pick this, okay, I will just draw from the point here or I'll just draw a diagonal across the square diagonal. And that diagonal, I can use that to find the distance between A and G, or G to C, or B to G, or G to D. Any of them will give me the same answer because the base is square. So when I extract this, the right angle triangle, you can see that from what I've done right now. Again, let's go back and see the blue lines. Observe the blue line, observe this, observe that. That creates the right angle triangle. So the base, we can have this, okay? That's the AC, from A to C. Then we can use Pythagoras theorem to generate AC as AC is equal to 5 squared, or AC squared, sorry, plus under 5 squared. And when I know my AC to be equal to square root of 25 plus 25, I will get root of 50. And root 50 is him as um, 5 root 2. 5 root 2. So 5 root 2 will be for this side, that's the AC. But then for me to get the height, I need halfway through this AC. So I'll divide the whole thing by 2. After dividing by 2, that will give me 5 root 2. 2 over 2 here. Now the question has given us this side to be 5. Can you see that? To be 5. So if I know 5 is here, I know this, I want to make H the subject. Simple. I'll just use Pythagoras theorem again and say um, H squared plus 5 squared is equals to 5 root 2 over 2 or squared. Then the rest becomes algebra, right? I can solve that to get the answer. Once I know my H and I want to find the volume, the volume now becomes one third area of the base, which is length times breadth. So it will be five times five, then times the height, which is times H. And so whatever answer I get for H here, I'll use that to replace this then my volume will come. Simple, right? Then you were asked to find the area, so the angle between the base and then the slant face. And if I come here, you can see that also from here. Yeah, that is here, right, good. So I want to find this. This is what I want to find. Oh, sorry, let's go back. This is what I want to find. I want to find this angle theta. I know my age. That has been calculated already. Okay? And the distance between the E here and J is halfway through AB. And AB is 5 according to the question. That means I can extract this as a triangle. This is the angle theta. This is my age. This is my... 2.5 because it's halfway through the base, the length of the base. So I want to find h. I know, so I want to find theta. I know my h. Okay. 
So what will I do? I'll just use tan theta. So tan theta equals h, which we know, and then over 2.5. Then I'll do tan inverse and get my theta. As simple as that. Then I want to find the angle that the two faces make at the top. That is the whole of this angle here. But I can first find one of the angles here. Let's call it theta 1. And that is the same as this. Or let me call it alpha. The same information with this and that. I can say tan alpha equals opposite 2.5 over adjacent h. And that also will give me the answer for the alpha. And whatever answer I get times 2 will give me the angle that exists. So if you do all these things nicely, you get the very answers we had from the beginning. All right. So let's go back to that question and see the answers we had over there. Good. So take note of all these answers and try solving this question based on the explanation I've given you and see if you get all the answers. There are five questions. The height of the pyramid, I've shown you how to do it. The volume of the pyramid, I've demonstrated that to you. The angle between the plane OAB and the base, we've said that. Total surface area of the triangular face, we didn't do that. I will explain that to you very soon. Then the angle between the faces, I've explained that to you. Now, for us to find the total surface area of the triangular faces, if you go back to the diagram, just find the area of this triangle, one of them, only one of them. How do we do that? We know we can find the height. We know the base. Then we can see half base times height will give us the answer. As simple as A, B, C, D. If you are having difficulty in knowing the height of the triangular phase, quickly go to the second part that we did here when we are trying to establish the angle between the face and then the base. Check it from here. From here. When we go to this stage, remember we go to this stage. If I know this and I know this, I can find this. And this is the height of the, um, the triangular face. And so that will be calculated. Then I know the area times 4 will give me the final answer. So question number 2, I'll leave it for you to solve it on your own. Let me give you the answers. When you solve it nicely, you get these three answers. Take a screenshot of this and solve it. With this, we've come to the end of today's lesson. This has been SHSR on Joy Learning, and this is Core Mathematics for Senior High School 2, or SHS 2 Core Mathematics. We started with the topic Measuration 2, Part 1, Part 2, today is Part 3. Today we're looking at cone and pyramids. We've seen the volume of a cone, the volume of a pyramid, the area of a cone, the total surface area of the pyramid, the vertical angles, the angle it makes with the base. I mean, we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot. This lesson is recorded and is in, or it's been put on um, YouTube. So you go to Joy Learning TV, you can have access to all the videos. Watch them over and over again. I'm sure you're going to make the best out of your time with Joy Learning. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Evans Oday. Let's be at that time. All the best. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.